Hello team, welcome to this week's adult teen senior black belt class trick lift. This week we're going to be working on our elbow strikes, we're going to be working on our katas, and of course we have our self defense that we're going to be going over. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with our natural stance. Everyone snap to attention, spread your feet, make a fist, cover, bring your feet together, and courtesy bow. Black stands, hands behind your back, and repeat after me. To build, true confidence, I must have, knowledge in the mind, honesty in the heart, and strength in the body. Winners never quit, quitters never win. I choose to be a black belt. All right team, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go right into our workout. So we're gonna start with our natural stance. We're gonna snap to attention, tap on your right leg, step out to your grand stance, hands go up, we go I am. So team, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna work on an elbow strike. So we're doing our elbow strike, we're coming off the back, we're gonna rotate our body. Take your thumb, put in the center chest, Elbow rows out, we're striking with the flat part of our elbow, not the tip, just flat as we rotate around. Hands are up, team. Ready? And when I say go, just do the elbow strike, ready? And go. And this is really important, we get the hip rotation. We're not just rotating our arm, we're rotating our entire body with this, right? And go. Right. Other hand stays up in a guard. Go. 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 And go. Awesome. And switch. Right. Team, remember this week we're going to be working on our grip. So with grit, that means really perseverance. It means we're not going to give up. You might get a little tired. You might get a little sore, but we're going to keep pushing ourselves the best we can. Starting with our backhand elbow strike and rotate around. Ready? And go. Ready? And go. And go. 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 And go. Awesome. And switch. Now we're going to do two elbow strikes. We're going to go backhand. Remember that belt hip rotation. And then front hand, we're going to rotate back to our center. So think about what your belly button is. My belly button starts out pointing at like a 45 degree angle off to the side. As I do the elbow strike, it rotates around almost to the opposite side from then do the elbow strike. And then as I do my back up front hand elbow strike, I rotate back, back to that starting position. It's really our entire body rotate that we get that back up mass to generate power. All right, team? Hands up in a guard. Make sure your hands are up, cheek level, elbows in, not way out here. All right, team? Back hand elbow, then front hand elbow, right? And go. Soup asa. 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 And go. Soup asa. And switch. All right. All right. Again, backhand elbow, starting with our left side. Front hand elbow, right side. And reset. Ready? And go. Soup asa. Go. Soup asa. Go. Soup asa. And remember, the hand stay up in the guard, so as we're doing this, one hand comes around, one hand's on our cheek, one hand rotates around, thumb toward the center of the chest. Come back around, hand comes back to your cheek, rotate. Don't let your thumb stick up in the air. You're not gonna get as tight of an elbow strike that way. Right? Hands are up, ready? And go. Soup asa. Go. Soup asa. Go. Soup asa. And go. Soup asa. And switch. All right. Now let's add a knee to this team. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go with our backhand elbow. So it's gonna be right hand, left hand, and then knee coming up, right? So we're gonna try and keep those hands up in the guard all the time. So don't grab your hands and throw them down. So backhand, front hand, hands up in the front, protective guard, knee coming in the groin. Maybe you're grabbing their head and striking that knee in as well. But we're gonna try and keep the hands up, really work on that control. All right, team? And go, it's gonna be soup, soup, awesome. Right? And go, soup, soup, awesome. Go, soup, soup, awesome. And go, soup, soup, asa. Go, soup, soup, asa. Go, soup, soup, asa. And go, soup, soup, asa. And switch, aya. So team, as you're going through this, remember to work on that perseverance. If you're starting to get a little tired, don't let that stop you, don't let you slow you slow down. In fact, dig deep and try and push yourself a little harder. All right, so again, backhand, front hand, knee, and come right back. Ready, and go, soup, soup, asa. 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 And switch. Aya. This time, instead of doing the knee, we're going to do a front kick. So, elbow strikes are really close combat. One, two, really close. Really good position for us to do a knee, but often what happens is you hit something in the head a couple times, they're going to try and move away. They don't want to get hit in the head a couple of times. So we're going to do our elbow strike. We're going to do an elbow strike. They're falling back. 
Baby staggering back. We're gonna take our back leg, we're gonna front kick. Boom! Right, and we're gonna come right back. We're gonna push them. They're trying to move away from us, we're gonna help them move even further. Right, keep hands up. Elbow strike, elbow strike, front kick. Starting with the right elbow. And go. Soup, soup, awesome. Ready? And go. Soup, soup, awesome. So as you're doing the kick, this is more of a thrusting kick. So you're trying to push them away. Strike with the bottom of the foot, balls of the foot, pushing out. Your hips are driving them in. Ready? And go. Soup, soup, awesome. Ready? And go. Soup, soup, awesome. And go. Soup, soup, awesome. And then switch. I have. I'm talking about that uh, thrusting kick. So there's two ways we do a kick, a front kick. It could be a snap kick or a thrust kick. A snap kick tends to be a real quick pop. Knee comes up, pop up and pack down. Notice my toes are pointed. Most likely striking with the groin, to the top of my foot to the groin, or even with my shin to the groin. A thrust kick is I'm pushing them away. With this, I need to get my hips involved with this. I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna push out. Right? I'm gonna push my hips into it. So propelling myself down, my heel or my supporting leg needs to be planted. If I kick and I'm over my balls and my foot, as soon as I make contact, I'm going to stumble backwards. I'll fall over. I need to be pushing myself in. The way we do that is we plant that heel to drive ourselves in. So when you're a kick, driving and pushing with that heel of the foot, driving yourself forward. All right, back to our guard stance. Left leg back, right hand up, right leg forward, hands up. So elbow, elbow. Uh, back leg front kick. Ready? And go. It's going to be soup, soup, awesome. Right? And go. Soup, soup, awesome. And go. Soup, soup, awesome. Go. Soup, soup, awesome. And go. Soup, soup, awesome. And one more. Go. Soup, soup, awesome. And relax. Shake it out. And if you need to take a deep breath, go ahead and do that. Into your nose, out to your mouth. As I'm breathing, I always like to use my arms to kind of symbolize that expansion of my chest. As I'm inhaling, my arms come up, my elbows are out, opens up the chest. I can get more air in. As I push the air out, arms going down, pushing out, using the arms to contract my abdomen to contract my lungs to get more air out. So that tired feeling, that burning in your chest, that's not from lack of oxygen, that's from a buildup of carbon dioxide. As we're breathing, as we're working out, we don't exhale as much. Those deep breaths, pushing the air out is a great way to get that carbon dioxide out of your system, get some good oxygen in. Helps with alleviating that burning in your chest. All right, team, we're gonna do our self-defense. The self-defense for this week is a bear hug from behind, arms pinned. Keep in mind, when we do bear hugs, almost any time someone's grabbing you, it is almost a real, always a relocation technique. It might be they're going to relocate you to the ground, they're going to pick you up and throw you to the ground, or they might be picking you up to move you to a secondary location, to a back alley, to a, a stairwell, to the, a car, but they're trying to relocate you. But in, in almost any case, when it's a fair hug from behind, they're trying to relocate you. There's the other rule too, is that they might be appointing you for a secondary attacker. Uh, and that's more likely if you're in a, a group setting, a large group setting, if it's a one-on-one -on -one attacker, it's most likely relocation. If you're in multiple attack situations, they're gonna try to hold you in place for an attacker from the front. All right, so we're gonna go with, we need to respond quickly. In any situation, we have to respond quickly. The longer it takes us to respond, the more likely we're gonna find ourselves in a really bad situation. I love the fact that actually Karate uses a shark as our logo, because a shark has one thing that's really important about it is that it has to stay in motion all the time. I think of core self-defense techniques, Remaining in motion, not stopping, not st being stationary, is so important. We need to take the initiative and continue carrying that initiative until we can escape. If we stop, if we pause, we give, we're basically ending our turn and we're giving our attacker a chance to take their turn. We never want our attacker to take their turn. We, we're gonna try and take all the turns until we can escape. All right, team, so let's look at this first. We're gonna do it from bear hug, bear hug behind our pin. So I'll do this from the side first. So from this side. The idea behind here is they're grabbing against me from behind. What I need to do is my arms are trapped. Like, and this is probably I wasn't paying good attention or like if we're in, already in an altercation, they snuck up behind me and got behind me. Like when I say sneak up behind, like we're exchanging blows, they block, they parry, they come around behind and grab, boom, I'm about to get thrown on the ground. Anyone who's done any wrestling is probably familiar with that approach. So what we're looking for here, yeah, 
is I need to move pretty quickly on this. As soon as they get my arms out of here, I want to try, I don't want to give them time to really lock those arms in place. They might, but I don't really want them to, I can avoid it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out with my leg, I'll step out with my right leg, I'm gonna step out, boom. As I do, I'm popping my arms up. So pop my arms in the air, because I want to get that grip loosened up. They're coming around here, my arms pop up a little bit, they're stepping out, you're dropping down, getting your elbows below their grip, all right? So they might grab you low, I want to get my elbows free, so I have some more movement here. So we're right here. They come in and grab hold of me. I step out, pop my arms up. I'm gonna strike to the groin, boom. It could be a hammer fist, it could be a heel palm, it could be a chop. You're striking the groin, you're trying to get them loosened up. I drop down and hit to the groin. From here, I'm gonna take the leg that I just struck, on the side I struck with, so I hit with my left arm, I'm gonna keep move with my right leg. I'm C-stepping behind them. As I do, I'm bringing my elbow up into their shin. I'm gonna shift my weight back, boom. Notice my feet are flat now, I'm shifting my weight flat. Boom, I'm bringing that up into their chin. I'm rolling back across my knee, taking them to the ground. From here, depending on the situation, I might kick to keep them down. I might spin, kick again to keep them down. Or I might just escape to get out of there, depending on the situation that we're dealing with. Let's do this together, team. I'll face the front, so I'll be marrying you for this one. So the self-defense technique is a rare bear hug, arm is pinned. We're gonna start with our arms trapped to our side. What I want you to do first is take your left leg. I want you to step out. As you step out with your left leg, drop your weight down. So we're not just stepping. We want to drop the weight down and bring our arms up. All right. We're trying to loosen that grip, try and drop out of their control. Okay. Let's just do that part again. All right. So we're stepping out, dropping the weight, and bringing your arms up all at the same time. All right. And you go boom, dropping everything down. Take your right hand. We'll do your right hand for this one. And we're going to heel palm to the groin. Boom. Strike to the groin. Again, heel palm, chop, hammer fist, whatever works best for you. Let's go back to the beginning. All right, you ready? Back to our natural stance. They grab us from behind. Boom. From here, I'll step out with my left leg. Pop the arms up so they drop my weight. Just chop to the groin, strike to the groin. My right hand struck. My right leg's moving. Step back. C-step behind. By C-step, you notice my feet come together, and then I step behind their leg. I'm not trying to step through their leg. I'm trying to step behind their leg and back out to my vision. My elbow comes up. And as I hit, I'm rotating around, get body rotation to amplify the power. Boom! My foot has to be flat. If I'm up with my toes and I'm trying to bring this around here, they're gonna catch my leg, they're, my knee's gonna pop. It's not, I'm not gonna be in a good position. I might fall with them. I need to make sure that by the point I get my body rotation around, my feet are flat as part of this process. So let's go back to the beginning. So rear bear hug, rear bear hug, arms pinned. Step out with your left leg, drop your weight, push your arms up. Right chop or strike to the groin. Right C step behind. Right elbow comes up. I might not, I might still be in a transitory position at this point. I haven't rotated my hips around. As I start to rotate, boom, my foot locks to the ground. Elbow comes up, hits their chin, rolls back. They're going across my leg. Boom, they fall to the ground. Depending on where they fall, here or there, I'm gonna kick. Maybe I'll kick here, maybe I'll kick there. I'll reset back to my starting position, right? And then stop, stay back, because I wanna get out of there. I'm not here to punish them for making a bad choice. I'm here to make sure I stay safe and get away there as quickly as possible. If your attacker falls to the ground and they are no longer a threat to you, do not kick them just because the self-defense technique says kick them. We continue the at our attack until they are no longer a threat. Once they are no longer a threat, it's our obligation to retreat and move away. That's what self-defense is. We protect ourselves and to the point we no longer need to protect ourselves. If we continue past that point, it's no longer self-defense. You become the aggressor. And that has different ramifications for you if you have to defend yourself in front of your peers, in front of a criminal case, or in front of a court case, civil case. All right, team, one more time, we're gonna do this. So, back to our natural stance. From here, I'm gonna step out with my left leg. I am gonna drop my weight, I'm pulling my arms up. I'm gonna hit him in the groin, boom. And team, if this stops him right here, you hit him in the groin, he falls on the ground, you're not doing anything else. You don't have to do anything else to him. That stops him, you can just run, okay? Assuming this doesn't stop him. See, step back, boom, hit him in his chin. Again, this may be the stopping technique. I hit him in the chin, he may get, get knocked unconscious. I don't need to hit him after that. But he's still standing, he's still a threat to me. I rotate my body, dropping my feet so I'm planning. 
boom, take him down to the ground. If he's lying there and he's no longer a threat, again, I'm going to stop. But if he does it there, he looks like he's about to get up, pushing himself back up to his feet. I hit the wall and he's coming back at me, wherever it's going to be. Then I'm going to kick. For this one, I'm going to do a spinning kick. I'm going to come around, boom, right? And then stop, stay back as I get out of there. Okay. Once they're no longer a threat, it's your obligation to leave the fight. All right, team. Let's look at kicking set. That's our kata for most of our students are red belts and lower in the adult senior team curriculum. Uh, we're starting kicking set's performance kicking routine. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be going over the front kick part of it today. So uh, it's a great kata for really developing those core skills that are important for generating power and speed in our kicking techniques. All right, All right team, ready? We're going to start with our natural stance. We're going to snap to attention. Bring your hand over, go Kempo Kata, I'm sorry, Ashen Kata. Uh, kicking set, bow, awesome. Take your right leg, step back to your guard stance, hands are up in a guard. We start with the defensive kick. A defensive kick means we're gonna take our front leg, we're gonna slide our foot back, almost into a cat stance, and we're gonna kick. Someone's, what's happening here is someone's charging at me, they're advancing on me, I'm not gonna move back. My back leg is planted, there's no movement here. I shift, kick, and I stop. That's my defensive kick. Sorry. So let's do that one more time. What's a defensive kick? Remember, the back leg does not move. Our front leg comes back to our cat stance. We snap that kick up and come back. We're striking with the bottom of the foot because I want to push them away. I'm not trying to lift them up, kick them in the groin. Ready? And go kick, boom, and come back. Awesome. Now we're going to do an offensive front kick. We've stopped them. Let's get them moving back a little bit. I'm going to shift forward. This is great for closing the gap too. If someone's really far away from me, I need to close the gap, I'll do that. I'm just gonna shift forward, my feet are gonna come together. As soon as they do, I'm gonna plant my back heel on the ground. My right foot's gonna come up, or sorry, my left foot's gonna come up, and I'm gonna strike and kick right to the center. So let's just do those two kicks. So from here, we're in our guarding stance. First kick is the left leg, comes back, cast stance, kick, boom. Put the foot down, second kick. Shuffle up. My, I'm probably on the balls of my foot at this point. Make sure my heel is planted. Kick. Boom. Advancing forward, right? So I'm just shifting back forward. I covered, move forward a little bit. Now we're doing an advancing front kick off of our back leg. We're going to kick. Boom. And we're stepping all the way in. We're in that full body rotation. So let's do that. Those three kicks. So back to our guard stance. Aye. Front leg defensive kick. Boom. Remember your back leg doesn't move in that one. Shuffle up. Offensive kick. Your back leg does move in this one, shuffling in. Kick, heels planted on the ground, foot comes back into a guard. Make sure you get a good chamber too. Don't kick and drop your leg. You want to kick, come back, and then plant it down. Right? We always want to get that good chamber. You want to control where your foot's going to go. After we do that kick, we're doing an advancing kick. We're going to take our back leg, bodies to the side. As we do this, we're rotating. We're rotating our body into this, we're getting our hips to the front. We're kicking, boom, driving the hips forward, stepping in. Hips are off to the other side now. One more time. Back to our natural stance. Snap to a uh, sorry, back to your guard stance. From here, front leg defensive kick. One. Front leg offensive kick. Shuffle forward, kick. Back leg advancing kick. Boom. We're shifting. Now we're gonna shuffle back. One, two, and three. We get back to our starting point. We're facing the other side. So we did everything with the left side. Let's do it with the right side. So now it's gonna be a right leg defensive kick. Right leg comes back, kick. Set it down, shuffle forward, boom, kick. All right, as we set down, we're gonna shift our weight in, kick, advancing kick, and we're gonna come back. Keeping the arms up, don't let your arms flail all over the place. All the way back to the beginning, ready? Hands are up in the guard, right leg back, left hands up, left hands are up, left leg forward, ready? Defensive kick, one. Offensive front kick, two. Advancing front kick, three. Hands are up the entire time, we shuffle back, keep those guard up. Right, elbows in, hands are up. Starting with the right leg, defensive front kick. Shuffle up, defense, offensive front kick. Advancing front kick off of our left leg. So kick, step in, and then shuffle back. One, two, and three. We're back to our starting point. So you can do that nonstop. Three kicks forward, switch sides, shuffle back. Three kicks forward, switch sides, shuffle back. You can do that nonstop. So that's our first part of kicking set. We'll be adding more of that as we go along. Okay. All right, team. Next, next what we're going to do is we're going to do long two. So long two is our senior black belt uh, kata. This is for students who have earned their senior black belt or higher. First degree, second degree, third degree black belts or higher. So 
This is a traditional Kempo Kata. We're going to start on our natural stance. We're going to snap to attention. We're going to go Kempo Kata. Long two. Bow. And let's go. We're just going to go right to a horse stance to start with. Right. Actually, team, I'm going to change my mind. I want to show you the new part of the Kata first, and then we'll go back and do the whole beginning. So by the new part of the Kata, what we're going to look at is we're gonna, I'm going to mirror the new part first. What we're going to do is we're going to take our left leg, and you're going to put it up in a cat stance. So you're up in your balls of your foot. So an easy way to do this is start with your normal guarding stance, right leg back, left leg forward, slide your front leg back, just like we were doing with our kicks. Okay, from here we're gonna go a couple of saucer position. My back hand, which is the case of my right hand, it's gonna go to my hip. My left hand, my front hand is gonna come across my body. Notice my hips are to the front. I'm gonna again go in the direction of my front elbow, which in this case is gonna be over here. I am gonna step out, so I'm stepping out to like eight o'clock on, on the clock. I'm gonna rotate my body so now my hips are facing to nine o'clock straight to the side. And as I do this, I'm gonna do an outside forearm block and a punch at the same time. I always think of that as like a bow and arrow when I do it. So let's go back to our guarding stance. From here, we're gonna go back to our cat stance. This is our cup and saucer position. We're gonna to step to the left. We're gonna turn. We're going to block and punch. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna shift our weight back into a lean away stance. As we do, we're going to take our front hand, we're going to do a back knuckle punch. Thumb to the ceiling, off to the attacker. So let's just do that part again. Back to our natural stance. Guarding stance, cast stance, cup and saucer. Step, turn, lean away stance, back knuckle. Step back into a cast stance. So we're off the nine, nine, nine o'clock. We're shifting back into a cast stance. As we do that, we're going to punch with the back hand. Right. So this again, this is just the new part of the kata that we're at, introducing this week. We'll go through and review everything up, up to this point in a minute. So back to our guarding stance. Take your front leg, slide back into a cat stance, come to your cup and saucer, step out, block and punch, lean away stance, back knuckle, shift into a cat stance, punch, from here, we're going to do a front leg front kick. At the same time, we're going to do a short punch, just vertical fist punch at the same time. So from here, we come back and we're going to strike and set down. So let's just do that again. Then we're going to add all, we're going to do the alternate kata, the top kata all the way through. All right. So we're back to our cat stance. Boom. Step and turn. Block and punch. Lean away. Back knuckle. Shift back. Cat stance. Punch. Front leg kick, front hand punch, and reset. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add that to the kata. We'll go from the very beginning, add our way through. Okay. For the purpose of the, this drill, I'm going to do this facing um, the side, and then I'll do it facing the front, uh, or facing the back, the same direction you're going to do. All right. All right. So let's start from the beginning. Snap to attention, Kempo Kata, long two, bow. Go into a horse stance, cover it, like we would in short two. Start with your right leg, we're gonna step forward, we're gonna do an inward block. Right hand chop. We're gonna do a left hand heel palm. Rotate your body, heel palming in. Thumb to the bottom. From here, I'm gonna shift back. I'm gonna do a right oh, spirit hand to the body. Coming forward, left hand hammer, inward block. Left hand chop. Right hand heel palm, left hand spirit hand to the body, shifting into a horse stance, kind of like a diagonal horse stance. Both knees are bent. From here, I'm coming back to my cup and saucer position. This is our new part. Cup and saucer over here. I'm stepping out with my left leg as I do. I'm doing left inward block, right punch. From here, I am going to do a lean away stance, shift my weight back to my right leg as I straighten my left leg out, back knuckle punch with my left hand. Then I'm going to go back to my cat stance. Left leg pulls forward, right hand punches, my hips are to the front. Take my left leg, I'm going to front snap kick, punch, step down, back to a cup and saucer. Now we have to do it on the other side. We're a cup and saucer, facing the front, cast hands to the front here, hands to the side. Now I'm facing turning the opposite direction, I'm going to turn all the way to the right, inward block and punch. Happens at the same time. Lean away stance. Cast stance, punch. Kick, pull, kick, and punch. As we step down this one, we're going to cut that down into a guard position, and that's going to be our ending point. So I'll turn around, face the other direction, so you can see it from the other side. 
All right, so again, going from the very beginning. Snap to attention. Campo Cata, long two, foul. Go to your horse stance. Step out with your right leg first. Inward block, right hand chop, left hand heel palm, right hand spear hand. Stepping forward, left hand inward block. Left hand chop to the neck. Right hand heel palm, left hand chip, spear hand. From here, back to our front massager, left leg slides back, left hand crosses to the right side of the body. We're gonna step to the left, we're gonna turn, we're facing nine o'clock. From here, block and punch. Lean away stance, back fist. Shift back into our cat stance, punch. Front leg kick, punch. Shift down, back to our cat stance. Toes pointing to the front. Right hands on my left hip. Step over, turn, poof, I'm at three o'clock now. From here, back fist, punch cat stance, front kick, kick, set down, and that's it. That's where we're gonna stop. All right, team, and that is long two. All right, team, everyone gather around a little bit. We're gonna go over our lesson of the week. I have a really great lesson of the week for this week. Uh, it can really make your life so fantastic. Most people think to motivate someone, you have to do some type of external thing, like a reward or punishment. I think every one of us remembers when we were kids, our parents probably said something like, if you do this, I'll give you a cookie or a candy bar, or I'll take you to McDonald's. They'll do something for us, right? Or something else, or you'd get punished for not doing the right thing, right? We remember that as, as kids. We probably, probably a lot of us went through that. The reality of it is that we're all deeply motivated. All of us are deeply motivated. Even if you're just sitting on the couch, watching the video right now, thinking, I should be up there working out with Mr. Kaffer, but I'm just sitting on the couch. You're still deeply motivated. That's the science. Science says everyone's deeply motivated. It, what's the issue is, it's just that we might not realize why we are deeply motivated. That's what we need to discover today. Now think about something you really love to do. Let's say it's like reading a book, maybe you're working on a car, playing a video game, or whatever it's gonna be. But I want you to ask yourself why you like doing that. You might just think, hey, I like it, all right? And that's okay, but I want you to ask why. Okay, well, I just got to sit here and relax. Sitting here and relax, that's not bad, right? So you like to relax. How does relaxing make you feel, or how does what you're doing, what your activity is, how does that help you relax? Well, if I'm playing my video game, I get to sit here and I talk to my friends. Okay. Oh, so you like feeling that connection. Maybe you like hanging out with your friends. Uh, maybe that's what your why really is. Right? Maybe it's that connection you're establishing with other people. Okay. So your plan now is to think about what you like to do that you're naturally naturally motivated to do. And then ask yourself three times, why do you enjoy doing that? And when you get done with those three times, and write them down, I think it's important you write this down, maybe you have someone else ask you, like ask you those three whys. Okay? And when you figure that out, that is your real, real motivation. And by the way, having someone else ask you allows you to bypass that self-filtering that we do. So. Um, if I ask the question, why, 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 I might only hit superficial stuff where if someone else asks me, they might require me to dig a little deeper. So I always ask a friend to help you out with this one. Okay. Once you can connect your real motivation to other things, well, it's huge, right? That's a real black thought attitude. I mean, I love the martial arts, but I don't particularly love doing push-ups and sit-ups. That's not what I love doing. I love the connection with other martial arts. I love the history, the lore, the traditions. I love all that part about martial arts. And I find that when I can apply those connections, that love of history and lore and tradition to anything that I'm doing, I can enjoy it so much more and I, have, I, I stay with it longer. Okay. So you find what motivates you and stick with it. Okay. Okay. So everyone, go off and enjoy your journey to Black Belt and find out why. Okay. Find your real motivation. All right. All right, team. I think I've talked a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and do a little more workout. So, Remember, we're working on grit and perseverance today. So uh, you might feel a little challenged with this one. Your goal today is to do the best you can. If you feel like you can't do another exercise or another thing, that's okay. Try and do one more. Just try and do one more. When you think you want to stop, just try and do one more. I got, I got to do one more sit-up. Uh, just one more. Just do one more. And when you do that one more, can you get one more in? So there's a, I just read a new article just this week. Uh, where they're, they're, there's more science, there's scientific basis now to support the 40% rule. So the 40% rule, if you aren't familiar with it, is that most people 
Most people will push themselves uh, really well when they have a fixed end point. Do, a, do push ups for 30 seconds. Do sit ups for 10, 10 steps. They can push themselves to that point. But what they find is that when someone doesn't have an end point, when they don't know how far they're going to go, push your do push ups, but you can't do another push up. They've, they've done some scientific research on this, and it, it confirms that people will stop at the bottom of the 40% point. Okay. They'll stop and say, I can't do any more. And they'll give them like a five second break and say, can you do five more? And guess what? Everyone does five more. And they take a break and do five more. And they can keep doing that. They keep doing it because when we, we, when we don't have that limit in our head, we start assigning an arbitrary limit. So when you think you're gonna, you can't do any more, just remember, just one more, and just one more, and one more. Okay. You, you'd be amazed at how many you can accomplish. All right, team, so let's go back to our natural stance. Snap to attention, snap by your right leg, back to your guardian stance, hands are up. Team, we're just gonna do a little speed round here. We're gonna take our back end, we're gonna do elbow, front hand gonna be an elbow. So when I say begin, it's gonna be elbow and elbow, and about halfway point, I'm gonna say switch, we'll go to the other side. All right, team, hands are up, ready, and go. So it's elbow, elbow, right, and go. Soup, awesome, and go. Soup, awesome. Remember, keep those hands up, right? Don't let the hands drop, rotating the body, boom. As we're going through this, keep going. Striking through it, elbow and elbow, boom, going all the way through. Get that good hip rotation, driving into it, hands up. Feel my hand on your cheek as you're striking. Keep going. Ready, keep going. Just a few more elbow strikes. Everyone is doing fantastic, just stick with me. All right, and switch, go to the other side. All right, keep back hand elbow, front hand elbow, elbow, ready, and go. And again, just at your own pace, go. You're just driving through it, elbows and elbows. If you're going faster than me, that is fantastic. If you're going slower than me, also great. As long as you're moving, as long as you're doing your best, that's what's really important here. We're still doing those two elbow strikes. Keep striking through it. One, two, right? Back hand and front hand. Keep going. Back and front. Go. Back and front. And keep going. Back and front. And relax. Shake it out a little bit. All right, team, what we do next is we're going to do setups. I mentioned this earlier. We're going to do setups. We're going to do as many setups as we can uh, for a certain amount of time. I'll stop this in a, few, a little bit. All right, team, ready? So we're sitting on the floor, feet up in front of us. Okay, and ready? When I say begin, down up, try and cross all the way. Ready, and go. So we're just gonna go up and down, right? All right, get a nice even pace. Try and keep the hands up. Don't grab your legs as you're doing this. Try and keep your feet on the ground. Don't throw your arms around to pull yourself up. You want to use those core muscles as you're working on your sit-ups. Just keep going, team. Back and down. All right. Keep moving. Keep your eyes focused on the front. You do need to find a pause point. I always recommend pausing at the top position, not the down position. Just easier to get restarted from here. All right, team. And time. Awesome. Everyone stand back up. All right, team. Hope everyone's doing strong. Don't give up on me. I want you to do your very best. Show me your natural stance. Snap to attention. Tap on the right leg. Back to your guard stance. I team. Knee strikes. Taking the back leg. Knee and come right back. Ready? Again, non-stop. And go. So knee and back. Ready? Go. Just drive those knees in. Again, try and keep those hands up. Don't throw your arms down. Keep your hands up. Boom. Ready? Keep them up and kick. Working on that control of our body. So I should be able to do something with my upper body. Completely separate from my lower body. Just like we do in long two, we're kicking and punching at the same time. So just bring those knees up, drive them in. Breathe as you're doing it. Exhale on the ups, on the kick. You can say soup, say asa, whatever works for you. Just keep kicking. Bring those knees in, boom. Drive in and come right back. All right, and switch. Go to the other side. Back leg knee. Keep going, team. Grab the knee all the way up. Elbows up. Hands in. Don't stop. Eyes focused to the front. Remember to breathe. Keep going, everybody. Looking be good. We're way past the halfway point. Everyone's doing great. Don't give up. Keep kicking. A few more. Just one more. And relax. All right, team. Next round is push-ups. Next round is push-ups. So down the ground, as many pushes as you can. If you need uh, to be on your knees, awesome. On your knees, keep your back straight though. Keep your back straight, don't just bend the waist. 
If you find regular push-ups to be super easy, do a diamond push-up. Do a push-up with chop. Do, do a burpee. Challenge yourself, right? The idea is we're working on that grit and perseverance. We're gonna have to try and find our personal best today. All right, team, everyone down in push-up position. Hands and knees on the floor. Stretch your feet out. All right, team, and begin. So we're just gonna do some push-ups. Try and go all the way down. Keeping your back straight, you wanna bend the elbows. Almost touch your chest to the ground. Don't have to touch it, but come up pretty close. You wanna bend your elbows as much as you can. Keep going, everybody. Breathe through it. Try and keep your eyes focused in front of you, not at the floor. Help keep your back straight. One more, and go. And back up. Awesome, team. All right, so team. Let's combine those exercises together. Elbow, elbow, and knee. All right, back to our natural stance. Snap to attention. Back to our guarding stance. So again, for this one, back hand elbow, front hand elbow, knee, and then reset. Right, I gotta fix my uniform before I start doing this. Ready? And begin. So one, two, three, and reset. Go one, two, kick. Ready? Go one, two. And on your own team, remember elbow, elbow, knee. Right. Thumb to the center as you're doing the elbow, knees coming up, hands stay up the entire time. One hand should be on your cheek. So you always feel that guard coming through. Keep going. One, two. Elbow, elbow, knee. Right. Back hand, front hand, back leg, and reset. One, two, three, and switch. Go to the other side. All right, team, and go. Back elbow, front elbow, knee. Go. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. And go. On your own. Again, if you're going faster than me, awesome. Love it. If you're going a little slower, again, as long as you're doing your best, that's okay. It doesn't matter. The only person you're competing against today is yourself. Pushing yourself to be the best that you can be. And relax. All right, team. Take a moment to get your breath. Hit your nose. Out through your mouth. We keep doing that. Our next exercise is going to be a plank. With the plank, our goal is to keep our back straight. Don't let our knees touch the ground. You can do this on your palm or on your elbows. All right, team, let's try that. Everyone down in plank position. I'm going to do it on my elbows today. And begin. So, watch your breathing. Make sure you breathe through this. Don't hold your breath. Keep yourself focused. It's not going to be very long at all. Just hold it. Keep the knees up. Back straight. Don't let your butt hit the ground. If you want, you can walk back and forth a little bit. Wiggle your thumbs. Get some movement going. Few more seconds, everybody. And time. Back up on our feet. All right, team. Last round. This time we're doing our shuffle up front kick just like we did in kicking set. So with this one, we're back to our guarding stance. We're gonna shuffle in, kick. And then we're gonna shuffle back, right? Shuffle in, kick, shuffle back. We'll start kicking with our left leg first, or right leg up back. When I say switch, just switch your side and go to the other side. Ready? And go. So shuffle, kick, and go back. Right, go. Shuffle, kick, and back. Go. And at your own pace. Still doing the kicks. Keep going. Stop. Keep your hands up. No, you're trying to get tired. Don't let your arms drop. Keep them up. If you need to hold your cheeks, hold your cheeks. Ready, and switch, go to the other side. Ready, and go, shuffle and kick. And back, ready, go, shuffle, kick. And go, shuffle and kick. Go, shuffle, kick. And go, shuffle and kick. Ready, keep going. Ready, and go, ready. Awesome, ready, and go. Awesome, breathe through it. Go, awesome. Ready, go, awesome. Ready, go. Ready, go. Ready, go. Last kick, team, go. 
And relax, shake it out. Then take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Thank you very much for joining me today, team. I always appreciate the opportunity to be able to share my love of the martial arts with other people. So thank you for being part of that. If you're working an online class today and you'd like to get an online credit for this, please film yourself doing the self-defense technique. We're better hugs behind, arms pinned. Step out, chop, see step back, elbow, rotate, take it to the ground, spin, kick, stop, stay back. Take about 30 seconds, video team yourself doing that. Share it with your online coach so you can get credit for today's class. All right, team, thank you very much. We're gonna bow out, natural stance. Snap to attention, face front and bow. Baby, see ya. Team, have a great weekend. Bye.